Hey everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Mom's Explanation. Today we Today. have Dr. Carly Wendler, who is my naturopath. Amazing. Yeah, she is wonderful. She is helping me through um, some uh, health struggles that I've been having. I decided to seek naturopathic help because uh, my family doctor, who is wonderful, just you know, is going by the books. Very and limited. Yes. Medical doctors. And are very I decided limited. that I wanted to try a naturopath, um, and she is just absolutely incredible. Um, she has good insights on today's podcast, talking about, um, you know, children's health and family women's health. health. Yeah. yeah. Family participation in health, mm-hmm. how modern medicine versus, versus um, naturopathy, what the differences are. I know a lot of people can be interested in naturopathy mm-hmm. and don't really understand what it is. And the difference. Yeah. Um, and But mostly just that it costs money, yep. right? So she makes a lot of really great points about why... Um, naturopathy is something important to incorporate into your life, especially if you have children, um, but for everyone, right? Exactly. So take a listen. Hope you enjoy. Thanks guys. Bye. You're listening to the mom's prediction, real life, real moms, real talk. Hey everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Mom's Explanation podcast. Today we have a doctor in the house. Doctor. Doctor Dr. Carly, Carly Wendler. I'm glad you said the last name because I probably would have said it wrong, even though we just practiced it. Welcome. Thanks for having me, ladies. Thanks for being with us. So talk to us a little bit about what your... So have you always been a naturopath? I have. Okay. So you went to naturopathic medical school. You knew you wanted to do it? Yeah, I started out at the University of Guelph. Okay. Intending to be a dietitian. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Um, yeah. My goal to be a dietitian was to work with eating disorders. Okay. Um, having had a personal history and growing up in the dance world, ballet and jazz, and I saw all of that firsthand. Me so too. I wanted to turn around and help. And <clears throat> halfway through the, the program at Guelph, two things happened. I realized the program wouldn't give me what I needed okay. to make what I thought wanted to happen, happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I also met someone whose mother was an ND. And okay. I had never heard of a naturopathic doctor. I came from a very small town. And so seeing what she did over the course of four years, yeah, coupled with the disappointment in the program for me personally, yep. um, led me to naturopathic medicine. So I finished my four years at Guelph um, with an applied human nutrition degree. And then I went on to naturopathic medical school. Amazing. Right. So were you in competitive dance? I was. Okay. Yeah. Where did you dance? I danced at a Simcoe. Okay. A small town of Simcoe. Nice. Joanne Adams School of Dance. Wow. Yes. The Earth Dancers was a competitive team. <laughs> nice. Yes. Very I was a competitive school. dancer too. That's yeah. why I'm asking. That's yes. interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> what a strange coincidence. Right. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. So um, you practice it here in Burlington. I'm in Waterdown. Water oh, yeah, not water far from there. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I, it's pretty much the surrounding area. So okay. I see families from Burlington, Hamilton, Waterdown. Right. Carlisle, and then some will come from like Niagara or St. Catharines as well if you're looking for a particular style yeah. of um, practitioner. And what would you say your style is? Um, well, my focus is, I'd say 70 to 75% of my practice is either fertility, pregnancy and birth, pediatrics, kind of new family medicine, okay. um, and women's health. Okay. And then also in that is a more holistic approach. Um, okay. I include attachment parenting in a lot of my... Um, coaching with parents and sleep strategies and so if you're looking for someone like that then they'll blend that um, with all the medical okay. doctor stuff that I do on an everyday basis too. Okay and so for someone if they're listening that's interested in a naturopathic doctor what is your recommendation to people to look for like what should they because a lot of people still really don't know yeah. they think when you go to a naturopath you're going to get vitamins yeah literally that's yeah. what right people think. like yeah. that's what people think like <laughs> yeah. it's like oh i like if you go there they're just going to tell you what vitamins to right. take which is not true right i say it's about one percent yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and but you must get that right sometimes yeah and from I'm, i've been in practice now for 14 years so when i first started out People had no clue at all, no one, what mm-hmm. a naturopathic doctor was. Right. So now there is much more awareness. Yes. Like, oh, I've heard of one. Or, oh, my sister-in-law sees one. So mm-hmm. right. the awareness is growing, and we have an association now that does a lot of marketing and advertising to plant the seeds of what um, we do. Yes. Um, but when someone... So, first of all, you can... In Ontario, we're really tightly regulated, so you can always 
you know, check my name and check that there's a, a registration number and that I do oh. have a license to practice. There's so people that are okay. practicing without. There are, yes. Wow. So people that call themselves naturopathic doctors that either aren't, so they haven't gone through the program or maintained their credentials, um, or there are some that have lost their license that oh. are still practicing. So I always recommend if you hear a name, check sure, it. You can go, yep, yeah, you can go onto our regulatory board okay. um, and find any name. In Canada, and each province is different. So Quebec, it's not licensed. So either of you ladies could move there and set up shop with a nice label. And be a natural path. path. Yeah. So it's nice It's nice here that it's tightly regulated for protection of the public, but then it's mm-hmm. a lot of rules for us right. to follow too. So why would they do that? Just because you're not prescribing medicines? Do which? Like in, in Quebec. Sorry, I'm just like mystified by this. <laughs> like why would they do that? Pretend to be yeah. a natural path. So why wouldn't they regulate it? Oh, that's up to each province, right? Right. So Alberta is well regulated, BC, Ontario, and now okay. out in the East Coast, there's a couple provinces out there. So right. Some weird. Do that just because that there's a demand for it, people want natural things. So hey, I can. I can I'm really good at this and yeah. pay, you know, charge people money yeah, for and, it. And, no, I know. I'm. Yeah. I'm more. I get why an individual yeah. would do it, but I don't understand why a province would would look at it let this happen yeah. and yeah. think like, meh. Exactly. Right. <laughs> But yeah. even, like even midwives, right? Same. It's thing. so They're true with midwives. Yeah. All regulated. Yeah, and, and I didn't. Awful in every province. I didn't I know that till I got a midwife and realized that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. yeah. So again, for me, it's like my exposure to naturopathy was. Um, uh, I met a naturopath. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And then I started going to her for different kinds of treatments. And that was sort of my exposure, right, mm-hmm. to yeah. what they do. Now, she did do a lot of vitamin therapy. <laughs> So yeah. that, yeah. but it was it goes good, hand in hand. Yeah. but it's more, it is more than it that. It is more. Yes. So and way every, more. every naturopath will practice differently. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, say there's 10 naturopaths in Waterdown, we're all different. So mm-hmm. for me, when I see someone, it's all about the root cause of things. Okay. Um, you can, you can give vitamins as a band-aid short-term approach just mm-hmm. as well as mm-hmm. you can a prescription. Mm-hmm. But for me, I want to find the underlying cause for things. So we're taking a look at diet. We're taking a look at exercise. We're taking a look at work-life balance. So mm-hmm. I have a really clinical approach when I start with someone. So mm-hmm. I do a lot of blood work, mm-hmm. a lot of testing where I can yeah. because my x-ray vision is broken. So yeah. <laughs> I can't see inside. That right. really, yeah. this gives me, so I don't use any fancy tests. I don't use any fancy machines. Right. I'm always using what's coming from that person. Right. Um, to diagnose if we need to and then like I said I use a lot of nutrition you, okay you can't mm-hmm. supplement a bad diet yeah yeah right you can't out supplement yeah. um, not exercising or going to bed late so for me that's a foundation of, of my practice is people have to eat well or at least better sleeping all those foundations for health and then right. supplements should be supplemental to mm-hmm. yeah all those foundations and, and I include a lot of acupuncture and Chinese medicine in my practice as well okay and herbal medicine, I love herbs. Okay. Your herbal teas. Herbal oh. teas, yeah, they yeah. work great for kids and pregnancy mm-hmm. and lots of really versatile uses. So it's not just supplements, it's a very small piece of at least mm-hmm. how I practice. So your practice, <clears throat> it, the approach is more also like behavior therapy. It's not just... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, look at lifestyle, yeah. Right. Like what time are you going to bed? You know, are you, what's your screen time like? You know, what's yeah. nature play for kids? You know, what are kids getting outside and... So a lot of the foundations that we forget about, mm-hmm. which right. a lot of them are free, right? You have to yeah. it free. anyway, right? Yeah. Or, oh, let's play outside versus screen. So yeah. a lot of things that don't cost a lot of money, but it does require an investment of time, right? which many people don't want to commit mm-hmm. to. But right. unless you want to get real healing, yeah. you mm-hmm. have to commit to those things. And so what are the biggest <clears throat> challenges that you find with people coming to you in terms of like their expectations of what they can get from you? Because, like you said, like the awareness is increasing, but people still, mm-hmm. you know, maybe are looking at their benefits and thinking like, oh, I have $500 to spend on naturopathy. Let me just go yep. over She'll to... She'll fix me. For you know, like, bucks. so <laughs> what is the disconnect between like expectation versus reality and all that sort of stuff? I think that's the biggest thing. You just totally nailed it. And okay. And people will look at, A, do I have benefits? If I don't, then I'm not going to go. Right. Or I will use... Oh, I've got five hundred benef- five hundred dollars. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm done. You know, I've got one more acupuncture left, and then my benefits are now like yep. and right. How much are you spending in other areas mm-hmm. that right. aren't investment in your health? So, you know, are we buying a Starbucks every day or getting our nails, That's and right. our hair done, mm-hmm. or 
are we eating out, you know, what family of four? It's huge. It's like a hundred bucks, yep. right? Mm-hmm. If you're lucky. So right there, like there's almost a couple appointments. So it's about shifting, I think, priorities for people and, and rephrasing it. That's an investment mm-hmm. in right. your health and considering it that way versus, oh, if I don't have coverage, then it's not needed, right? Right. It's so needed, FYI. Like yeah. I met Dr. Carly uh, through a class that she did at Goodness Me about raising a natural child when I was pregnant, always held on to her business card, you know, had some stuff happen to me after I had Evangeline. Uh, you know, my family doctor just kind of pushed me aside, gave me pills and, you know, here yeah. you go. Yeah. Then I spent my very first time with the natural path. What we, 45 minute appointment. We an hour. literally, yeah, an hour talking with her and literally like everything, <clears throat> sleep, eat, exercise. And she, she found something that my doctor missed and I was really upset about that. And then, of course, when I go back to my doctor and say, oh, you know, we missed that. Oh, yeah, that can happen. So I, I feel like now I, not that I'm angry, but I wish I would have started naturopathic medicine sooner. Mm-hmm. You know, like I knew it was always there and it was the same thing. Like, oh, it's going to cost money. Tony's benefits don't cover it. A lot of companies now are taking it out. But mm-hmm. now that I've done it, yeah, I will never not do it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like going to be a part of me. Yeah. You know? And I, yeah. I, I, and I agree, like, stop, maybe don't go out for dinner. Yeah. Stop the Starbucks and invest it. And I love that the appointments are 45 minutes to an hour mm-hmm. and you listen and she's taking notes and you know, your family doctor is already like, oh, I got three other people in the rooms, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, like your waiting room is never full. You feel like I'm your only person in that time, Yeah. you right. know, like, yeah. and that's what I love about it. Yeah. And, uh, I can see that. that natural child class you do. Yeah. It, she does it for free too, by the way, at places. Come on, guys. You have to go. Like this was one of like the most informative classes. Mm-hmm. And the whole oh the whole time. Just like light bulbs and this and that. Because I grew up in the eighties. Yeah. There was Ooh. no television. Yeah. When you I got home from it. school, yeah. I played outside yeah. literally till the street light came on mm-hmm. and came in and, and ate dinner and went to bed. Like yeah. that was life. Yeah. yeah. There are like uh, I don't know, thirty children that live in this complex. It's a beautiful day. It's Sunday. Mm-hmm. There's not an outside. My Where kids, are they? Yeah, my kids have been outside since eight o'clock this morning. They're the only, and we have my son's best friend lives two hours down. So it was a blessing we moved in there, and they found each other, and they are the only two outside <laughs> on the entire block outside. Yeah, all day long. It's, yeah. Well, it's funny because we live. We've lived in our house for five years, and we just started seeing the neighbors because we're usually the only ones outside. And my kids started getting, my older kids started getting bored. They're like, oh, there's like no one to play with, right? So then they started seeing people come out and like started going over and being like, who are you? Like, what's your name? Like, do you want to play with us? And so now they've like formed these like little relationships. So they're outside more. Yeah. But it's like, it's very true. Like we're, we're more shut in now. But why? Than before. Well, because I, I think there's a variety of reasons in my opinion. I think that. Like parents are overworked yeah. and, and overwhelmed. So I know even for myself, mm-hmm. it's like I have a to-do list that is 72 items long and I have two babies that are, you know, under three and I need like seven minutes. So it's like, where's Peppa Pig? Yeah. Okay, here you go, seven <laughs> minutes. Because I can't yeah. open the back door and be like, bye. Yeah. Because my son will be eating the grass or finding <laughs> something else or choking on a wood chip and my daughter will be pushing him over or, you know, like it would just be total insanity, right? Yeah. We'll, which will just increase my list from 72 to 75 yeah. and then it will be disaster. So that's why for me sometimes the screen is where it goes. Yeah. But it's not all day and it's yeah. a small amount of time. But I know for a lot of parents, so for example, our neighbor, he works from home. Mm-hmm. And this summer he has three boys at home. His workload is not changing because they're at home. So he's not sending them outside because they range in age from seven Mm -hmm. to four. So he's not going to be like, you know, we don't live in a complex Mm -hmm. like this. We live on a busy street. He can't put them in the front lawn by themselves while he's, you know, so at at home, they're inside, they're safe, right? I guess, yeah. So, I mean, there's a variety of reasons, I know, but we've just become dependent on it because lifestyle, I feel, is not realistic for raising children the way that we used to and that's where i dial it back with parents is if they're and and adults you know is is your job part of the problem i had someone yesterday very common story they commute at least three hours a day yeah at least if that's if traffic is good yeah they have a two-year-old and they see them for quality time 10 minutes a day is what Mm -hmm. she told me yeah wow so where are our priorities here 
right? Like that's, that's right. For, and for me, it's it's different. Like I've stayed home part time with my kids, and mm-hmm. I make sure my work day is done, so I'm always there to pick them up. That's what's important to me. And I think we've yeah. got lost in the shovel level shuffle of money and mm-hmm. busy, and it doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't. Like, but it doesn't cost have... of living has skyrocketed, and scary. people want to be able to put their kids in extracurricular activities yeah. and go on vacations yeah. every year, yeah. and yeah. you know have nice clothes and drive a nice car that costs seventy thousand dollars, <laughs> and yeah. you know all these things. And it's like if you want those things one income generally is not going to yep. do that for you yeah. so both parents are out of the house yeah. 60 hours a week not seeing their kids yeah. yeah right because they're they're trying to attain all these other things right yeah. so it's like people i think now more than ever need your approach to medicine right it's yeah. that shift in lifestyle yeah. that shift in mentality that shift in priority because you know, we're going to get to a point, I think, where people are going to start, and it's already happening, you know, like I have probably, you know, there's five women that I know personally um, who have some form of cancer in their 30s, Yeah. right? Yeah. And you wouldn't have seen that 20 years ago. So it's like things like this, as a result of the way we're living, mm-hmm. the way we're eating, all these things, it's you know, it's making us sick. It's making us yeah. sick. It's, it's killing us younger killing us. than yeah. ever. Kids too, right? The amount of yeah. anxiety and depression mm-hmm. in kids and yep. temper tantrums and meltdowns and like it's, yeah. it never used to be this way. And it's a yep. whole combination of things. It's not one easy thing, right. but yeah. the home life is a really good and easy first place to start and right. prioritize. And that's where I remind people whether they want to take that advice or not. Yeah. But is this mm-hmm. what you expected when you had kids that you'd see them for right. an hour a week? Right. right. Monday yeah. to Friday. Right. Because then you're like me where they're almost nine and six and they don't want to play with you anymore. No. Right? Yeah. And That's right. I don't have those years back. And I'm so glad that I invested in those years mm-hmm. and yeah. made time and stayed home when I did because yeah, now they don't want to play with you. Which is good. They're yeah, good yeah, yeah. little beings. But I try to remind parents that you can't get that time back. Right. And so this is probably something that people don't expect when they go to see an naturopath. Nope. nope. Like not they're not <laughs> yeah, they're not going to a doctor and thinking like, "Oh, she's going to ask me like how much time I spend with my kids." And then, you know, there's probably yeah. a lot of defensiveness happening, of course. some some yeah. guilt feelings, yeah. obviously, which you're not trying to guilt them or shame them in terms of their lifestyle. Not at all. Just trying to help. Just trying to help. And but, I look at again underlying causes like yeah. kids are anxious and yeah. You know, we have separation anxiety. Well, if they see you 10 minutes a day yeah. or say even an hour, mm-hmm. well, they just, they want you, right? So they, they're not really, they don't have an anxiety disorder, yeah. but we have to look at how life is treating little kids, right? Yeah. And if there's no connected or little connectedness and attachment, then they're going to fight for that whenever they can. Right? Yeah. And that looks mm-hmm. like clingy and whiny and really they just um, want your attention. Right. Like they're not trying to ruin your day right. by like having a fit. It's just yeah. that, you know, they miss you. Yeah. And right? some of the, one of the best pieces of advice I read in a parenting book is that when kids are giving you a hard time it's because they are having a hard time right they're mm-hmm. not trying to make your life miserable yeah. and hard they're having a hard time and it's our job as parents I mean all the schedules and tiredness and frustration is to figure yeah. out what that is and be there yeah the resilience for them until they learn how to cope right which is not something mm-hmm. that people really think no. and you know in those so moments so many adults yeah are missing self-regulation yeah and how do kids learn self-regulation? From the parents. Yes. Parents, yeah. right? So right. if we're working 60 hours a week and we're not exercising and we're living off fast, fast foods, well, our own self-regulation is going to be poor. So yeah. Yeah. we're yelling at the kids, don't yell! It's like, oh. But I'm, but I'm, I'm yelling. yelling. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we have to yeah, step back. So yeah, pe- parents are not expecting at all to have these kind of conversations. No, of course in not. In office, but I think they're necessary ones. For sure. For sure. I agree. Yeah. why they're there, right? Yeah. Well, it goes back to sort of to your point is like we are, you know, especially our generation is conditioned Mm -hmm. to believe that a doctor's appointment should really just go one way. So you go in, maybe the doctor says hello to you, you explain (laughs) what your problem is. Now I've heard from people that you're limited to two issues an appointment, which I think is crazy. (laughs) That used to be one. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, and then, you know, they write you a prescription and send you on your way. Right? Like, that's how we're sort of conditioned this generation to expect a doctor's appointment to go to. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Go. So it's like, if they come to you and you're like, getting out a notepad and it's like, uh, am I at a psychiatrist? Like, what is happening Mm -hmm. here? Like, why are we having... So that's very interesting. And most people probably don't know that. They don't. No. And that's why I have a box of Kleenex handy where yeah. people are sitting because it's yeah. amazing the amount of people. I'd say 25% at least 
of new people. Yeah. On the first appointment, will start crying. Yeah. I believe and it. Whether it's because they feel it's okay, I, I get time. Yes. Someone's listening to me. I feel safe. Yeah. I don't know. Right. It's totally normal. So there's also people will say, you know, I'm a psychiatrist. Are you a counselor? Yeah. What's going on? And mind yeah. body medicine is where it's at. And yeah. you can't be emotionally, physically, and mentally healthy if that mind body connection is, isn't. Right? Is it and that's there? something yeah. that that allopathic or Western model does not consider at mm-hmm. all. Right. It's right. that connectionness or yeah. the totality, right? The whole picture. Yeah. So that's where we have a downfall of we've got GI specialists and we've got OB specialists and, and everyone to, okay, I'll look at these lady parts, but well, I don't know about your skin and things often go together, right? Mm-hmm. right. It's like your body's a puzzle. And if you don't think about all the pieces, we miss things. And I think that's yeah. where things, you know, like yep. what you shared gets missed is because, well, we'll pass you off to this other specialist. It's yeah. Like, oh, they fit together. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So like not to shit on like all medical doctors, mm-hmm. because I, what I will say is I had a really shitty medical doctor like a GP, GP is yeah. that what yeah. called? Yeah. yeah, so I had a really shitty one, and I was like, I am not changing doctors or ever going to the doctor again until I find one that's nice. Yeah. Because I do not believe in self-medicating. Mm-hmm. I do not believe that prescription medication is the answer mm-hmm. to everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need a prescription all the time. Yeah. Like, that can't be the answer, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I have a daughter who's, my daughter's diabetic, mm-hmm. Um and, you know, people just were, so my crappy doctor was very dismissive of the signs of my daughter's condition. She was very young. She was very dismissive of me and what was happening with my daughter. Um, that was the beginning of the end of my relationship with this person, if you could call it that. Um, but, you know, as a result of her having diabetes and being reliant on drugs, I have, you know, come to learn like about the corruption of pharmaceutical companies and I'm even more against using prescription medication unless it's life or death situation, which for my daughter, unfortunately it is. But what I will say is that in my pursuit of a good doctor, you know, I did a lot of interviewing and doctors don't like that. Yeah. (laughs) So I probably met with five doctors that were like outwardly rude to me. Because I was asking them about their practice. Mm-hmm. They, they thought that it was absolutely ludicrous that I would be coming there to mm-hmm. ask about their practice. Yeah. There was only two that would actually like talk to me and answer my questions. And one of them, she's my doctor now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was I found it very interesting. Mm-hmm. And one of my conditions really was that like if I choose to see a naturopath... It's important for me that you are open to working and treating me in collaboration with this individual. Like, is that something that you're interested, that you would be willing to do? And my doctor said yes. So that's part of the reason why she's my doctor now. So Dr. Jennifer Wong, you're amazing. I love you. So is that something that you do with your patients? Yes. And in my first appointment... Um, for people that either have never seen a naturopathic doctor or who have, yes. I still have my opening spiel okay. where I talk about four different types of healthcare models we have. Right. And I use the word collaborative. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. using the word collaborative. Yep. Yeah. My vision is collaborative care. Yes. In all honesty, it doesn't work that way. No. But in my brain and in my practice, that's how I'm working. So this week I wrote seven letters to medical doctors about I've seen, you know, Sally, and this is why she's here. We'd like some help with some lab analysis, blah, blah, blah. I've never heard back once in 14 years. But I re- really? Wow, not once. Not once. Oh, my god! But you keep writing. <laughs> I keep writing in the hopes that maybe someday that will be a seed for the doctor to say, okay, there's an open door here. But or really, even when I write. But right? really, it's also the administrative staff that works at the That's clinics right. too, right? Yeah. Because they're probably the ones that receive your letter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're the ones that are going... Delete. Nope. Yep. Yeah. And I always tell my patients, too, like, here's the letter. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not honey. Here's the letter. Bring a copy with you in case they haven't reviewed it. Right. So, yeah, I literally talk about the four models of care, where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are of each. And right. And we don't know everything. So that's why we have to work together. Because mm-hmm. I, I can't prescribe antibiotics. So if I have meningitis or someone has, you know, something serious, I'm going to refer them. Yeah, right? but I'm great at chronic and recurrent things. I'm great at prevention, optimal right. lifestyle. So that's where, if we need, you know, an antibiotic, I'm not anti medicine at all. Right, mm-hmm. I want my life saved. Safety is always important. So I'm not an ND that's 
and it has to be the natural way or nothing. Right. It's always safety. So when I'm working with kids as well as adults, I tell pe- I tell parents like I treat your children like they're mine. Yeah. And what I would want to have happen. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and be recommended as if they were my own kids. Right. And that's sort of like the unfortunate piece I think about natural medicine is a lot of the publicity goes to the radicals, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, this so-and-so believed in natural medicine and let their child die Mm -hmm. or so-and-so believed in natural Mm -hmm. medicine and had their leg amputated. Like, so there's a lot of bad publicity. And speaking of the different provinces, there was actually a couple in Quebec many years ago where they were labeled as an ND in the media and they weren't actually licensed naturopathic doctor. But once you have that new story, it very rarely gets corrected or yeah. it doesn't have the impact that the initial one had. Right. Or um, there was other pieces to the story that never got cold, told. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. of a family out on the you know, out west in Alberta. Yeah. And the ND had nothing to do with it. They were cleared. It was the parents. But it went into the media that naturopathic doctor. And these yeah, people. that's right. So mm-hmm. we have to be careful with what we're reading. Yeah. Because it is news story, right? And they want to make news and create sensationalism. So yeah. unfortunately, more bad than good is exposed. Yeah. But yeah. we're working hard, one family at a time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, our, for sure. And boards to increase about awareness about all the lovely things that we can. Yeah, do. absolutely. And how many people are happy. So that's also where we rely on individuals to tell their stories and say, oh, I had such a positive experience and this is how this yeah. fits into my healthcare team. Mm-hmm. It's really is teamwork. Yeah. And, and it, you're out there, you know, like you're out there doing these classes yeah, and like a family <laughs> doctor would never do that. Like an MD would never do that. No. Like I would never see a family doctor mm-hmm. holding a class at a goodness me or anywhere mm-hmm. talking about anything. But it's because they're so overrun with patients yeah like you go to these doctor's offices and I can't like I can't even believe how many people they see in a day especially my old bad doctor (laughs) like there were so many people there all the time like first of all trying to get on the phone was ridiculous and then trying to get more than seven minutes in a room but how many of those people there didn't really need to be there Oh, I, I don't know. Well, I couldn't like say. Like conditioned, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to go in. That's, oh, that's it. it. Yes. And so I, again, with... That's why they're overwhelmed. ...kids yeah. is, okay, here's a package of take-home stuff. Here's some herbal tea recipes and blah, blah, blah. So right. if your child has a fever or you have a sinus right. infection, try these things at home first yeah. before you call me. Right. Yep. So I'm trying to equip them with, with tools. Right. Right. And if I do my job well... Yes. ...and people listen to me... Mm-hmm. Yes. ...then I see people less often. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like the doc. We're we're doing a good job at keeping people sick. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's oh why yeah. That model of care. We've got so many people. Mm-hmm. It's like now, the pharmaceutical companies and you know all these higher ups have done such a great job that almost no one is healthy anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, absolutely. That's true. So yeah, true. in the office we are busy, but we don't have you know lots of germs. And mm-hmm. and if I do my job mm-hmm. well and teamwork, then I shouldn't see you any more often than yeah. you need an oil change for your car. Right. So eventually yeah. it's like an oil change, yeah. right? Where right. it's preventative keep, care yeah. or you come see me twice a year. Right? Which is which, which is important to say because people look at the cost and the initial cost of like seeing you on a regular basis, yeah. but it does lessen over That's right. time, yeah. right? Once you've started to make progress and your health has improved, you're not going quite as often right. as you would have yeah. before. And are you buying less Tylenol, less Advil, That's less right. heartburn medication? Like people have no problem going to, you know, Chopper's Drug Mart and here's 80 bucks a week. But it's like the Band-Aid. That's why. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a quick fix, that. right? Well, you know, if you if you change your diet, then you don't have to buy all these Tums. Like how much does that cost you? Oh, and I'm kind of see a light bulb. But maybe they might not totally agree, but oh yeah, I kind of never thought of it mm-hmm. that way. It's like yeah. all these prescription medications and Band-Aids you can spend less on Yep. And save towards those trips. It's yeah. true. Towards your, your seventy thousand dollar car or whatever. Right. It is, right. And be more productive in your life and live optimally. Because how yeah. many people are living in abundance? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like none. Very few, right? Yeah. Very I would few. say like none. none. <laughs> right? Like truly. Like yeah. it's just I agree. like people grind it out all day, every day. You know what I mean? Like I don't see and people wonder. It's so funny because I work in a place where there's a lot of American people. And American people have this perception that like Canadians are so happy and joyful, right? Like they're so happy <laughs> yeah, and joyful right? and they're so kind and all this stuff. And I was like, no, people here are are That's not. Right. They're so and not everyone in Canada, but in the larger cities, like people are miserable. Yeah. The misery is like 
deafening. And like, we know. It is so bad. Scientifically, living in cities yeah. is associated with depression and yep. anxiety. And yeah. We, we know this. It's yeah. very well documented. So. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. So it's funny that the perception is that because I'm like, you know, the reality is very different. So I, I'm very interested to know if when you were in school, did they talk to you about the element of like convincing patients that this was the right way or techniques on how to, you know, I know you're not selling a lifestyle yeah. to someone, but it well, kind of really. is that, right? Yeah. So do they talk to you about that at all? Zero. Or are you just, okay. Zero. Okay. It's so all it's you. all it's just. All me. Okay. <laughs> and I think my practice has changed 180 since having kids. Okay. Why is that? Because in school, yeah. you have, okay, here's the ideal diet, gluten-free, dairy-free, exercise five days a week for everyone. And it's kind of, this is the ideal. Right. This and is like a blanket. Become, and becoming a mom, it's like, well, I'm tired and I'm exhausted and mm-hmm. I have no family around to help me. And so what's the practical reality of changing certain lifestyles Yeah. so that mm-hmm. if you're successful? Yeah. Because if I tried to tell you know a new mom, well, your baby's fussy, so go gluten-free and dairy-free and exercise and get sleep. Well, that now I've lost her. Yeah. Right? And she won't come back. And my yeah. goal is so people don't come back, but it's because right. it's yes. own volition and right. because they're feeling they don't need me as often. Right. So no, we don't get any business training, no marketing, no sales tactics. That's interesting. I've just learned along the way right. of how I try and live my life and, and my family and right. try and incorporate that. So I've got the mom hat, but then I also got the doctor hat that mm-hmm. I hope I'm blending yeah. well for families. But no, it's not covered at all in school. And most of what I know, even medically, yes, um, has happened outside of school. That's it's just the basics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So I'd say most of my learning, like you said, I'm out in the community. I'm doing classes. I'm doing research. It just Always. it's never yeah. ending knowledge yeah because it, it changes so quickly yes. and it's and, like you're you're self-motivated to do that right like you're not required to do that to maintain yeah, no. your license or anything we like do that have, every two years we are required to have a certain amount of um, credits okay right? just like doctors medical doctors yeah we have to have ce credits but yeah. you're free to choose mostly what you want ah, to okay. learn about so yeah. i tend to focus like on the women's health and and children and, and fertility stuff okay um but being out in the community and and it's kind of a, a selfish reason that I do that. Is okay. That I live here. Yeah. And I want my neighbors to be healthy. My kids are going to have girlfriends, boyfriends, mm-hmm. partners later. Yeah. And I want to keep them healthy so they have healthy partners to have yeah. kids with. Yeah. So for sure. I'm selfishly trying to spread the information. Yeah. Be yeah. Healthy because I don't want to live in a sick community. Yeah. Okay. Of course not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm very much about that, especially because I have. A child who's you know dependent on medicine for life yeah. um, and I even find the care from her specialist <sighs> to be so bad yeah. <laughs> like just just she's a very nice person but I only get to see her for like seven minutes through every three months mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah. and it's like I there are all these questions that you have as you know a mother sorry i'm gonna get emotional about this i'm so sorry i wasn't even planning about talking about this but um when you have a child who is ill like my daughter is like it's forever yeah and there's no support in the community and the medical you know the medical care that you're given is so limited Mm -hmm. that is covered Right, that yeah. she can, that she can be given for free, is so limited. It's um, devastating. Like yeah. as a parent, it's devastating um, because you know there are questions that you have and things that happen on a regular basis, and there's no one to talk to. Yeah, you can talk to other parents, yeah. but they don't really know. Yeah. you know, like everyone's just guessing. Yeah, you know, it's just like trial and error. But this is my daughter's body. Like, I hate to think that I'm doing trial and error with my growing daughter's body, but that's what's happening. Yeah. Right? So, it's very, like, there's a need for some sort of shift in in some way. And I I think part of that, like you said a couple times, is feeling rushed and only two symptoms per visit. And that's one of the things, one of the beautiful things about naturopathic medicine and how I practice is that when you do pay to pocket, that's what you're paying for is 
the time quality and yeah the quality of care yeah. right and so if people want better care slowly yeah. what the government's doing is we're privatizing it Right. It's moving towards what MDs do is if you want to pay even certain blood work, right? Like yeah. celiac, now you have to pay yeah. vitamin D. So s- small things slowly are paying, mm-hmm. pay for services. And that's, yeah. that's what you're paying for is my yeah. time. And yeah. I don't think about what's coming next or before is mm-hmm. when I'm with someone. That's your time that is for you. Right? Yeah. And so if you're willing to pay and invest, whether it's coverage or not, that's yeah. the quality yeah. of care you're going to get. And OHIP will only take us. So yeah, far, so far. Right? Yeah, for sure. My boss is the people sitting in front of me. OHIP is the boss, right? Yeah. Of doctors. Uh, yeah. So they have as much as they would like to spend time with patients, I'm mm-hmm. sure, and do research. We just have such a sick population that they can't. Yeah. They have no time for yeah. even lunch. It's yeah. true. Right? Yeah. It's just the way because everybody's the sick. Designed right. It's medication, medication. Oh, now I need medication for these side effects of this medication, and it's mm-hmm. a very backward. Mm-hmm. idea because yeah. before we used to pay doctors only when they may as well that's yeah. right now we're paying them yeah keep us. sick and, essentially yeah well and dependent <laughs> really it's yeah. dependency right yeah. that they're creating a culture of dependency that allows pharmaceutical companies to line their pockets and people yeah. to be broke mm-hmm. really independent yeah so that's depressing <laughs> um <laughs> So talk to us about like a few (laughs) specifics. So for people who are listening out there, how would they know when, if they're listening, if they're the right person for you? So what are some specific things, um, conditions, things that, you know, you treat like in terms of women's health, what are some specifics for kids? Like what are some of those things? So, and something, um, that I forgot to mention earlier is if people want to, like you were interviewing doctors, right? Yes. I actually have a 15 minute complimentary meet and greet appointment. So if someone okay. wants to meet with me, nice. yes. what yep. is your practice style? Can you right. work with this? Are you a good fit? Do our personalities gel? You can book 15 minutes at no cost to just meet me and see. Yeah. Do we fit? Yeah. Um, so fertility, I really, anyone on a fertility journey, whether they're just planning to have their first baby, whether it's couples doing IVF or any, any medical treatments at all, whether it's the start of that journey, whether they're in the middle whether mm-hmm. at the end saying, okay, I've had enough of the medical stuff. I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything fertility wise. Amazing. Um, and I focus a lot on acupuncture there. Too. Okay. So especially for the medical um, treatments, acupuncture works really well for increasing okay. success. Awesome. Um, I do a lot of work in pregnancy as okay. well. So optimal pregnancy. There's so many things we can do in pregnancy to optimize health of babies even for years mm-hmm. to come. So okay. Focusing not just on supplements, but dietary wise, the birth environment. So prepping moms for a positive birth experience, mm-hmm. Too, mm-hmm. which is huge, huge. Yeah. I think we've really underestimated the impact of birth experience for not just babies, but for moms, mm-hmm. yes, dads, right. Whomever's in, yeah. the room in there. Yeah. Um, Cause it does have a long lasting Oh yeah, physical and, and mm-hmm. emotional, mental aspect too. So oh yeah, prepping for birth, um, pediatrics, really anything, eczema, colic, asthma, reflux, all the the things that are common now mm-hmm. that aren't normal. Right, right. We've come to think of them as normal because right. who doesn't have eczema now? Right. Yeah. Like who's not on an inhaler? But again, shifting that mentality that well, yeah, it's common, but it's not normal. So any of the regular childhood stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I do well child checkups too. So again, mm-hmm. not just visiting your doctor. Okay, here they're gonna weigh you. Here, what's right. your circumference? Okay, see you in two months. What's your quality of sleep? Do you have questions about their sleep patterns? What's their nature time like and screen time? And what are they drinking? What are they eating? Their temperament? Do you have questions about parenting style and discipline? Like I've got books that I refer out to read on temp- temper tantrums and all that kind of stuff. So things you okay. will not get with your family doctor. Right, you yeah, yeah, for sure. Take up yep. the majority of that appointment because, yeah, right. wait, sure have them weighed but that's not the be all and end all there's that's so right. much more mm-hmm. yeah right and thinking about preventative health right so yes. okay, let's talk about solids what's your plan there or changing sleep patterns and mm-hmm. talking about what's biologically normal right how it's convenient right so yeah. it's convenient to have a baby that sleeps through the night Who for sure it's amazing but <laughs> yeah so is jealous. it normal and is this what the child needs yeah so again trying to work on the biology and making sense of that because it used to be we used to live in villages where we'd see breastfeeding and we'd help our aunts have babies and our cousins and yeah. now we're so isolated that yeah the first time we, we see breastfeeding it's ourselves yeah right? yeah so i'm trying to create a village in right an office too that okay yes it's you you can breastfeed here and this is what it looks like and yeah yeah small villages yeah well i have a whole thing about breastfeeding i could <laughs> yeah. go on about it really because <laughs> yeah. 
I, um, yeah. yeah, I actually had an interesting conversation with a member of my family who we were at a restaurant and my son was hungry mm. and he's almost a year, but he's very selective with solids. And like, if we're at a restaurant and he's like not into the snacks I brought or like, I don't really feed him at restaurants yeah. necessarily. The hungry. food. So he's hungry. So I, I just sat there and I fed him at the table. And she was like, you're just going to feed him there? And I was like, uh-huh. well, where else am I going <laughs> to? Like, this is where I'm sitting. And like, yeah, I'm just going to feed him here. And she's like, oh. And I was like, why? She's like, well, some people might be offended because oh, they're yeah. eating. And I was like. So is he. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, he's eating. He's a baby. This is where he eats from. Yep. Like, who the fuck cares? Yep. But it's like. Yep. The notion is that like I'm offending others yeah, by pulling your boob by out by feeding milk in my it. child. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I could go. Like I, there's just so much about that that I think is so wrong, and I just. You know, like my breastfeeding journey with all my children was different. And with him, it's probably going to be longer because our relationship is different. Yeah. But it's like, I, I, I don't care. Like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I, you know, people are like, oh, he's almost a year. Like, are you done? And I was like, well, he's not ask done. Him. Yeah. Ask him. Right? Ask him if he's done. Yeah. He's yeah. not done. So, like, I know he'll drink other things. He likes water. He yeah. likes coconut milk. Like, he'll drink it. Yeah. But he still likes to nurse. He likes to be with his mother. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. And it's nutritious and healthy for him. And that will just be what it is. Yeah. But there's so much yeah. negativity that goes mm-hmm. around it. And I don't know why. I'm actually reading. It's in the in in the the van. I yeah. got in the library called Unlatched. Okay. Unlatched. Unlatched. Okay. Okay. And it's talking about the history of breastfeeding when it was peaking and as it was coming down and wet nursing and formula companies and what they've done. Yeah. So that will tell you exactly. Okay. I'm very interested. I'm going to read question. that. Yeah. Did you uh, see Call the Midwife? No. <gasps> Netflix. No. I tried watching a few. Episodes. Oh, okay. So the a few are a few dry. Like, the, like you gotta, you gotta okay, give it like five time. or six, but there was an actual episode where the formula company came in yes. to give a spiel yes. to a group of mothers yes. about formula and how formula was better than breast milk. And this woman sold every mother in the room onto the formula. They called them milk nurses. Yes. And I was sitting, and even mm-hmm. the, the midwives were like, What? And, you know, breast is best sort of thing. And this this woman had literally sold this entire group of women on formula because they could make it whenever they wanted. It was convenient. You could go shopping and leave the baby with someone else. I know how much they're drinking. Oh, my God. And I just, I didn't know that that's how it happened. Like, it happened. yeah. oh, my God. That literally is in that, in that book. They called them, yeah, yeah, milk nurses, and they would come in and, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's Incredible. crazy. Yeah. I don't know. There's just so many. Yeah. So I'm also a lactation educator. So Wonderful. I'm very intent on helping moms start breastfeeding, yeah. continue breastfeeding, and normalizing it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's also a big piece of my work as well. Yeah. Because um, it's not just nutrition. I actually now downplay the nutrition. We yeah. all know it's nutritious. Yeah. yeah. But the medicinal value yes. of breast milk yeah. is... Yep. Like mind blowing. Mind blowing. Yep. The emotional connection. Yes. I was mentioning anxious kids and depressed kids. Well, that connection is yeah. huge. And the oh. longer we do that yeah. for them, the yeah. more connection they have. And later they can be independent and they're secure and trusting. And yeah. So, yeah, nutritious. Yeah, yeah, we all know that. Now mm-hmm. I'm emphasizing the medicinal and everything values else. and the yeah. bonding, brain connections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, in the book, um, something really cool I learned is the amount of cortisol in mom's milk helps shape the personality oh really? yeah so new first time moms tend to be more anxious right yeah and so cortisol is going to be a little bit higher it's a stress hormone. okay so yeah. firstborn babies they're seeing tend to be kind of more type a-ish or more organized and more cautious um, yeah and so that correlates to higher cortisol levels whereas subsequent uh-huh. babies tend to be more chill because now moms are more experienced, more confident, so they're seeing a relationship with That's cortisol. That's so levels. interesting. That's and cool. She, isn't it? Yeah, wow. I'm gonna have to read this book. Yeah, it's very it's really interesting. Cool. Yeah, cool. and it's it's a she's a journalist that wrote it, so it's not sciencey. It's right. made for regular moms like us. And yeah, it's not hard to figure out and understand. It's it's shocking Amazing. the history of it. Like yeah, the pieces you were just talking about and and other things. But yeah, now we can see. Now I can see where this mentality has come from. That and I'm, that breasts are for sexuality. Yes. And they're to be hidden. And my kids know now, like, they 
that's where milk comes from. That's mom's yeah. milk, and that's what you're expected to do is nurse yeah. your babies when they get older. That's right. And yeah. they, that's just what they know. They watch, I let them watch birth videos, mm-hmm. and they're watching a lot of birth the other day. They know where babies come from. Yeah. So it's just normalizing for them that, yeah, this is the normal part. It's not yeah. the women in bikinis on billboards that that's what breasts are for. That's, yeah. That's right. That's secondary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. Like, I don't, uh, I don't do like the, the pee pee and the wee wee it's like yeah. I just talk about like that's yeah. your vagina he <laughs> has a penis like that's how yeah. it is you know like you it's not everyone is so concerned about sexualizing everything yeah. it's like why they're just kids yeah. like it's just this is their body parts they need to feel a connectedness yeah. Yeah. to their own body and know what it is yeah. without me making it childlike or you yeah. know what I mean it's I don't mm-hmm. think it's it's just my opinion I don't think it's necessary yeah, my kids will tell you about and amniotic fluid and that's awesome yeah <laughs> no, and so am I like my daughter yeah, my so daughter hard. told her some girl at soccer that babies come out of a vagina yeah. and I think that the parents were horrified that she said that so I was just I like, God. Up and like, yes. Oh, right? I did. I was like, that's girl. good. I'm God. like, you're very, she's, well, cause she came to me and she said, I was right. Right. Yeah. Like the, the baby comes out of your vagina. I said, yes. I said, unless the mummy has a problem. Cause we, I talked to yeah. her about C-sections because yeah. my oldest son, his stepmom had to have a C-section. Mm-hmm. He was very confused about yeah. what that was. So I, t- I explained to the older two, like, this yeah. is what happens. And they were like, Oh, like just horrified <laughs> about someone. But now like they know. In. But now yeah. they know. Yeah. So she was like, you know, in case unless they have a C-section, it, it comes in the. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, my my friend at soccer said no, that's not right. And I was like, oh, what did she think? She's like, oh, the stork that brings them. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> but people still say this they do. to their kids because they and don't I'm know how like, to approach oh it. They don't god. know how to to have the talk. And I think. It's but it's also, not even a talk. It's just it's like, not, yeah, you know, like how to talk. Asked how babies are made yet. No, neither of mine. Just where they're coming from. It's, yeah. yeah. So like my where, 11-year-old has started having the education piece. Right. So he did come home this year, one day at school, from school, and say like, oh, I know how babies are made. And I think that's gross. <laughs> so you know. school taught them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but then he wanted to walk away because he told me that talking to me about it would be awkward. Okay. And I was like, well, it might be, but we're still going to talk about yeah. it. Or like, is there someone else you feel comfortable with? Yeah. And I was like, so would you want to talk about it now or we could talk about it later? And he was yeah. like, well, we could talk about it now. So it actually wasn't that awkward, yeah. but yeah. he was he like, thought it would thought be because you're the mom. Yep. Yeah. And that's so. something I'm learning as I go along is yes. be the approachable parent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like I never get mad at my kids if they've done some, like something wrong. Like I'll never freak out and be shocked. Like, yes. okay, well tell me more about this. Or, you know, if they shoot the F bomb the first time Yeah. or they, this other word they've learned at school, I'll, okay, where, so where did you learn that? Yeah. Right. Like inside I'm like, where did I learn that? Oh yeah. gosh, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> yes. But I want them. So now my son, he will come to me and he'll yeah. say, you know, this is what happened at school and he's never afraid. So I'm like, be the approachable parent because mm-hmm. it will pay off. That In the long run. I'm still like his primary yes. <laughs> influencer for now. For sure. And yeah, it's stuff like that. that yeah. Will be important to keep yeah. coming to us. It's very true. It's very true. I think what I like the most about what you've said is that your practice is all encompassing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about, you know, one problem, one time, one solution. It's how can I make your life better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just how can I make your health better? How can I make your life better? How can I improve the quality of your life? Um, And that's something we don't consider when we think about seeing a doctor. Yeah, it's ever. more like how can I get through the rest of the day? Yeah, how can I survive till I get <laughs> like I can't line? I can't miss work, so yeah. mm-hmm. you know can you give me something? Yeah, because <laughs> because I, I need to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, and I do know? have those yeah. band aid solutions. Of course, for sure, and of course you do. Know that, yeah, I've got band aids. Yeah, but know that you can either just keep paying for these stress vitamins, mm-hmm. or you can work less or deschedule, you know, reschedule and. So you're kind of like a life coach too. Yeah, kind of. <sighs> Life coach, motivational yeah. coach. How, it's it's, all, coach. it's yeah. all encompassing. Yeah, it yeah. all goes hand in hand. And the hard thing is that when people don't want to commit to change or anything, yeah. they take it personally. I'm like, but if they would, what haven't I told them? And how can I make it better? And yeah. I want to go home and like make you exercise. And mm-hmm. yeah. But I have to, it's still 14 years in that this is their journey. Yeah, it's the letting I'm go. Just, I'm kind of the, the jumping board or the yeah. starting place. But And if you're planting the seed, the hope is that eventually something grows out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so tell people who are listening where they can find you. 
Um, I have a website. So okay. You can check out uh, more about my practice and read more about all my special interests at um, drcarlywendler.com. Okay. For everyday stuff to follow, I'm on Facebook, so you can check out um, my favorite recipes that I share and awesome. interesting articles. All my community events mm -hmm. are listed there. You're going so. to Chickadee Cafe, I think I saw I'm in December. Chickadee Cafe yep. doing Raising yep. a Natural Child. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should go. <laughs> yeah, so the Green Parenting Natural Child um, will be in December, yeah, at Chickadee Cafe. So all the events are listed on my Facebook page. And, of course, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Dr. Course. Carly Wendler on Instagram. We follow her, so you mm -hmm. can peep her. Yep. Our yep. Instagram account yep. for that, too. Yep. And we will have everything on our website along with this episode, so you can just click on it mm -hmm. to find her. Awesome. Thank you for being here. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Mom Explanation and Rolling with the Momies. Rolling with the Momies. <laughs> <laughs>